Hello, Instagram. How are y'all? I'm so excited to talk to you guys today and share with you about this thing that I get so many questions about all the time, which is sex and IBS. And like, what is the interplay between these two things that they just like don't go together? And oh my God, sex and IBS. And like, maybe you're out of a relationship and you're like, man, I really want to start a relationship, but I'm nervous because oh my gosh, this thing. Maybe you're in a relationship and you want to make it better. Or maybe you're like I was for a very long time when I was in a relationship and I wanted to leave the relationship because because I knew it wasn't serving me, but I was terrified that if I left the relationship, no one else would want to be with me because I had IBS. Yeah, I lived there for a couple of years and it wasn't a fun place to live. And so I figured my way out of it. Hey, Chrissy, and I wanna share that with you. So I'm gonna chat with you a little bit and I want you to stay with me the whole time, okay? So if you're on here right now, don't leave. This might be a little bit of a longer video. It might be a little longer live, but stay with me because I guarantee you, you're at the end of this, you're gonna be like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. I have so much more control and so much more empowered as someone who has who has IBS, but is also a really sexy, foxy human being, okay? So first of all, let's talk about this idea of the accelerator and the brakes. So if you've ever driven a car or a go-kart or anything, then you know that there is an accelerator. So there's a pedal that makes you go faster. And then there's a brake, which makes you stop. And what's really interesting when you drive a car is that if you have the accelerator on, but you also have the brake on, the car isn't going anywhere. So if this is you, let me know. If you've ever had a moment when you've been like super turned on accelerator, Right? So something that you see or hear or smell or touch or taste or imagine and you have an association to it and it turns you on, right? But at the same time, there's this potential threat, which is your break. So anything that you see, hear, smell, touch, taste or imagine that your brain interprets is a good reason not to be turned on right now, right? So you can have these two things on at the same time. Are you going anywhere? No. Because as long as your brake's turned on, doesn't matter how much you're rubbed up, depending on how sensitive your brake is, you might not go anywhere, which is a lot of times our IBS in different ways acts as a brake. And so we might be really, really turned on and really want to do it and really want to connect with this person in this really intimate, beautiful way, but your brake is on. And so, and IBS is the brake. Something about IBS is the brake, and because of that, you're like, we're not doing it. Okay? So... Thinking about these two things, accelerator and a break, know that there is no innate way that you were born with an accelerator and a break. Okay, so there's nothing like when you were born and came out of you know the womb, it wasn't like oh this woman she is turned on by this and oh this guy he is turned off by this, right? These things that we have our turn ons our turn offs they're learned. Okay, they're learned things that happen to us, right? We learn it, and it's different for men and women. So even if they've done studies where if you look at a man's brain, right, if he's been, if he's being given um, information about something or someone's talking to him about a problem or whatever, it lights up the left side of his brain, which is the information side. So men, masculine men, I'm sorry, men, or, or even masculine women, anyone with a masculine energy it lights up that side of their brain and they store it as information. Whereas women attach things very differently. If you tell a woman words, it lights up that information storage side, but it also lights up their emotion. That's why if you've ever had um, guys out there, maybe you'll relate to this, if you, or even girls, if you've ever had someone, um, like a woman say something, I'm sorry, if had someone say something to a woman, she always remembers it if there's high emotion involved. Meaning like if a woman is angry, if she's really sad, if she's really happy, if there's some kind of really strong emotion to the words that someone says, she remembers exactly the phrase that was said. And you can even create like further experiences around those words that were said. I have many experiences like that. And so this is different between men and women, right? Men and women, masculine and feminine, very, very different. So know that though there's no innate stimulus or threat like brought on, you know, like you're not born with turn-ons and turn-offs already innate, you learn them over time, men and women learn them differently, 
okay? Men and women learn them differently. And also know that your sensitivity is different. Some people have a very, um, have a very sensitive accelerator means it takes nothing to turn them on. You can like look, th look at them the right way and it's like vroom, they're ready to go. And then you have um, others who have like a, a more not so sensitive accelerator and it kind of takes a little bit more to turn them on. And then some people have a very sensitive break. You look at them funny and they're turned off. It's like, nope, not happening. You looked at me funny, right? And it's okay. All of this is normal. Wherever you're at, totally normal. Doesn't matter. Everybody has different things going on. It's all normal. We all have the same parts. We all have an accelerator and a brake. Every vehicle works different, but every vehicle works. Okay? So know that, like, all of this, this accelerator, this brake, these turn-ons, these turn-offs, it's all in relation to context. And I'm going to give you an example of some of these contexts. Okay? Things that can turn you on and can turn you off. What about feeling how you feel about your body? Have you ever had those days where you like put on that certain dress or do that certain thing and you're just like feeling yourself, right? Yeah, I'm getting some heart strength from you guys. So I know you've had those experiences where you're just like feeling yourself. It's a lot easier to pump that accelerator if you're feeling yourself. But what about those days when like you just wake up and you're just not feeling super awesome about your body, you know? Like especially ladies when it comes to that time of the month. And you're just naturally, physically, like our bodies just retain more water. We feel a little more puffy. We don't, you know, we're not feeling super awesome about our body. That hits the brake. Okay, so turn-ons or turn-offs. Another thing, concerns about your reputation. I love to think about this in relation to IBS because this happens for everybody. Everybody has concerns about their reputation when they're talking to someone who they're interested in that they might be intimate with. But... When it comes to IBS, it's like this taboo thing a lot of the time, right? And so we're concerned, oh, God, what's he going to think about me? What's she going to think about me if she knows he knows I have IBS? What are they going to think about me? So that idea of, like, I don't want to be judged, that can turn, turn on the brake. But it can also, you can also use this to turn on the accelerator. If you think about some positive things that might happen during that experience, like, if you, you know you're really good at this one thing, come on. Y'all know you're good at one thing, especially that one thing, you know, that thing I'm talking about, whatever it is for you. You're like, oh yeah, he thinks I'm really awesome because I can do that one thing really well. Um, also, like feeling desired versus feeling used. This happens for women, especially considering if you've had like previous trauma and stuff. Um, so, but, but even if that's not the case, everyone has this idea of, am I feeling desired or am I feeling used? And... It's hard to feel desirable sometimes when you have IBS. And so that might be your struggle, right? Like, if I have an off day, I just don't feel like... You, sometimes you can't receive a man who's desiring you. Or vice versa. You know, I'm not going to say this is just for women. Um, feeling accepted by your partner. This is where IBS is kind of a strength. Because if you tell a person about what you're going through and this, like, intimate thing about you... And they accept it, and it's just like, oh, okay, no big deal, it's a thing. It immediately draws that connection. This is why IBS can be a huge connector for people. It doesn't have to be a point of disconnection. It can be a point of connection. Um, or what about style of approach or initiation? You know, like there's some guys who come on and they're like, you can tell they're respectful and loving and caring. And then there's other dudes where it's just like, oh my God, like, I feel like I need to take a shower. That was just, oh, like not an appropriate way to come on to a lady, right? Um, and women, like we do this too. I mean, there are women who come on super duper strong and there are some men who love that. And then there are some men who don't, right? So it's not like there's one good or one bad. It's just that whatever your perception is, what's your context? What turns you on? What turns you off? context is important but before we dig into what exactly is your context because we're going to do that we're going to figure out some things here in just a few minutes that's really going to help you figure out what are my turn-ons what are my turn-offs and actually like how can I use this in my life because you guys know me I don't want to just come on here and talk and not give you something that you can walk away with and actually use to make your life better okay so but before we get into that let's just like pause for a second Let's take a deep breath in. 
I'm gonna deep breath out. <sighs> Guess what? You're normal. Just because IBS has a play into your context, that's a thing for you. Everyone else who doesn't have IBS, it's something different. It's something different. So really when we think about, oftentimes I hear, I, honestly I hear this probably on every discovery call that I give you guys, is I wanna feel normal again. Guess what you guys, you are normal. You're totally normal. And just because you feel like you're having trouble with this whole sex thing because, you know, this weird thing is happening and you have the brakes and you have the accelerator and sometimes you want to do it and sometimes you don't want to do it and things that turn you on, it's kind of this weird, vulnerable, hard thing sometimes. It's the same way for everyone else. It's just they have a different thing they have to overcome. So that person that you're telling, you know, like, oh, I want to be intimate with you, but I got to tell you about this thing first. I have IBS. You doing that, they have a thing too. Guarantee you. They have a thing they're nervous about telling you as well. Okay? So let's dig in for a minute. We're really going to think about what are those circumstances in the present moment? What are the mental emotional states in the present moment? What is the context that turns me on or turns me off? Okay? So think... Close your eyes and think back to your in your life to a time that was a super sexy moment. I mean, one that you just think about and you get really, really, really excited because it was just beautiful and gorgeous and just mm, a little bit lusty. It was so good. Okay. And I want you to think about what did it for you? What was it about your own men mental and physical well-being? How was your body image thoughts that day? What was your mood like? Did you have any anxiety that day? Think about your partner's characteristics. What was he or she like? What was, what were their, what was their health like? What was their body image like? How did they smell? Was there a certain smell that turned you on? What was their mental state? And then think about the characteristics of your relationship. So was there trust? Was there a certain power dynamic? that turned you on? Was there some kind of emotional connection? Did you feel desired? And what was the setting? Where were you? Where did it happen? When did it happen? Did you see your partner do something positive before you got it on? Like, you know, if someone goes and if your partner goes and is very um, loving and cordial to your family and you like how they interact with your family, for girls that can be a turn on, okay? And then think about um, what were your other life circumstances going on in that moment? What was your work or family related stress like? Was it a holiday? Was it an anniversary? Was it a special occasion? Now, thinking about that, that was just one sexy context. You can also do this for not sexy contexts, meaning where was that time when you, like, you were just not about it. Maybe someone initiated, maybe your partner initiated and you were just like, nope, nope, not happening. I'm sure you can think of one of those too. I'm not gonna dig into that now, but I do wanna share with you that going through this process of figuring out what are my sexy contexts, what are my not sexy contexts. What did you say, Alex? I wish I could watch the rest of this, but I have class. I will post the rest of it later, okay? So thinking about this, like, there were some things when you think about those sexy and those not sexy contexts, there were some things that came up that were related to IBS. I'm sure of it. And then there were other things that weren't related to IBS that came up. Like for me, you know, like that idea of being in a relationship where I didn't feel loved and trusted and trust at all him, right? Like that was a relationship where I, it hit my brakes. It was not a sexy context for me. That had nothing to do with my IBS. Nothing, nothing at all. And so I do want to put a caveat in here that if everything you just thought of when considering what's your sexy context was about IBS, then I think if you're 100% focused on IBS like that, then you really need to think about, did I play out fully when Jasmine just asked me these questions? Or am I choosing to focus on IBS because it'll bring sympathy or pity or attention from others in some way? 
And if that just stung what I just said, then you know the truth. I'm not afraid to go there. Not afraid to go there. So long story short, everyone has stuff. And if it wasn't IBS, it would be something else. And the beauty is that IBS is something that you can gain more and more and more control of, right? It's not, you know, everybody's like, oh, there's no answers. Fuck that. That's bullshit. There are lots of answers. There are, there are tons of answers. There's so many things you can do for it. So many, so many. And this is just another reason to get your shit under control. <laughs> Pun intended. This is just another reason because the more you get your IBS under control, the more sexy contexts you can create, the more chance you have to have, to have that thing that you want. And, you know, for many women, we need to tell them, we need to tell him before we do it, right? Like that's the sexy thing that we, that, that will create a sexy context for us, but it's the thing we're scared to do, but it's the thing we need to do in order to create the sexy context for having the sex, okay? So, it, because when we do that, it takes the, the brakes off. When you just tell him ahead of time, ladies, it takes the brakes off. And here's the thing, I do, I do, I do that. Before I get intimate with anyone, I, I they know. They know that I have IBS. Even though I've been regulated for three years, they still know, okay? Because, and I've told men and they didn't give a fuck, and I've told men and they got uncomfortable. Either way, whatever happens, or some other thing, because many things can happen, I promise you're gonna live. I promise, I promise, I promise. I know it's really scary and it's really hard, but when you do that, it's, it's kind of cathartic and it completes this stress response cycle that you have, and we realize that we're safer having told him. So I know it's hard, but for me, that's what makes the most sense. Um, And at the end of the day, ladies, women on here, um, men seek to provide. They seek to provide for us. And I know that might sound a little off, especially if you listen to the cultural conditioning surrounding men, but this is why when women come to me, they, they think, they say, Jazz, like, I want a relationship. Like, I need to overcome this so that I can have, um... A healthier relationship or so that I can date again or so that I can feel confident in my own skin and you know that's what it's costing them and I ask them well how long has this been happening and how long are you willing to suffer for now are you ready to get it under control and so that's what kind of takes them over the edge to say for for some women not for all women but for some women that takes them over the edge to actually do something to get more control whereas men who seek to provide come to me and say I need to give my woman more pleasure and IBS is holding you back. I kid you not, these are the discussions I have. Pretty cool, my job's pretty cool. (laughs) And they come to me and they say, I really wanna like please her in bed, but I'm having trouble because IBS is holding me back in X, Y, Z way, right? Men really do seek to provide. So if you come to him and it's in this moment and you feel like you need to tell him before you get intimate, I promise you, if you come and say like, Darlin, like, we need to have a chat. I'm excited for this. I can't wait for this thing to happen between us and to get closer and be more connected. But I have to tell you something ahead of time, and I know that you'll be able to to take it in and, and you know, be with me anyway because that's just the man that you are. And I know that's what you, you know, you seek to give me all these wonderful things. And he's going to be so busy thinking about this goddess of a body that you have. He's not going to give a fuck. He's not going to care. He's not going to care at all. In fact, this vulnerability that we as women bring, that's what they want. That's what they want. And I know it's scary, and I know that, um, like I said, social conditioning, cultural conditioning of the world is saying the opposite, but I promise you that's what they want. They just want you to open to them. So I'm going to, I have one thing to share with, two things to share with you. One is to help you with this whole idea, um, and that is I have... Uh, like adapted this for IBS from a book I love. It's called Come As You Are by Emily Nagasaki, I think is her last name. Um, and I'm going to be including some a framework for how to figure out your sexy and your not sexy contexts, right? I'm gonna be providing that in an email next week. My Our newsletter goes out on Wednesday. So if you're not on the newsletter, go get on the mailing list. It's just click the link in my bio. It'll take you right there and you'll get a freebie too. It's a super good freebie. Okay, so go do that if you want to have this framework to take you one step further. It's also, if you have a partner, it's really good to share with them so you can see what hits their brakes. Because there might be, you might even just be looking at him a certain way and he's like, I can't take it. 
you never know. So do that. It'll be really fun. And second, um, I'm doing a live like this, a gratitude meditation on Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So it's going to be a little less lusty than this one, but it's a really great heart-centered breathing meditation um, that I totally adore and just lights, the, lights me up. I get really excited about it. So if that is something you're interested in, come back on Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Do this with me. Um, if you can't make it that time or if you're sleeping in on Saturday, because I know that happens sometimes, <laughs> then it will be um, posted on YouTube and Facebook and the other places that let me post longer videos, okay? I love you guys. Please send me any comments, any questions, any takeaways you had from this video um, or questions. I would love to share more. All right. Have a fantastic day, warriors. Bye.